This is a demonstration of using the Carveride software pattern modeling tools to create a robot pattern. When modeling patterns in the Carveride software, I always start with a carve region to define the lowest depth level of the carve I'm making, called the floor. In this case, I'm setting it to a half an inch. Next, I will start defining the shapes of the model. In this case, the model is very simple and made up of mostly rectangles. I'll use the puffing tool to raise the shapes out of the floor. I'm choosing the flat puff and moving the slider to make the edges straight up and down rather than beveled. After I've created the head and torso rectangles, I can begin adjusting the height of these elements to help define the model. Here I am lowering the height of the head to 80 to push it back behind the torso section slightly. Now turning the perspective view off and rotating the board I can see this effect. Using the square board tool, I'll straighten out my board and draw the legs. I'll start with the rectangle again, then the flat puff as before, and then I'm going to use the tilt tool to create an effect of the leg stepping forward. Now I'll copy and paste this leg and position it for the other leg. I want them close together so I don't have a deep gap that will need to be carved in between. Then I'll adjust the tilt of this leg to be the opposite of the other, creating an effect of the robot walking. Next, I'll give the robot some more details. I'll use the circle tool and place a circle within the torso. Then I'm going to define the shoulders by drawing a rectangle all the way across both sides. I'll do the same flat puff as before on this and then adjust the height again to 80 to set it back from the torso slightly. For the rest of the arm, I'll draw a larger rectangle to define the length. Then flat puff it change the height to 70 to set it behind the shoulders. I'm going to copy and paste the shoulder rectangle and move it down and adjust the size to define an elbow joint as well. Next, using the arc drawing tool, I'll create a clawed hand. All classic robots have clawed hands, so this guy will be no exception. I'm 
using the same flat puff as all the other elements. Then I'll make some adjustments for its placement so everything looks right. I'll also push the height down to 80 so it's also set behind the torso. Then mirroring it horizontally and I have both arms finished. It's really beginning to look like something else. Now we just need to add more details to finish it up. With the circle tool I'll add some more elements to the torso. I'll try a bubble puff on this circle and then adjust the height of the torso down. 90 in order to give the element room to sit on top of it. The bubble puff doesn't really show up, so I'll raise its height to 999 to try to raise it high enough to sit on the torso surface. Even at that height, it doesn't show up, so I'll try a different puff. This time the flat puff with the slider all the way over again. That seems to work well, so I'll mirror it horizontally and move on to the circle I drew in the center of the torso. With this, I'll use the revolve tool. When I click on it, the profile drawing window opens on the bottom of the screen. Here I'll draw the side profile of the shape I want to revolve around the circle. The yellow line on one side indicates the center point of the circle, while the white line represents the outside line of the circle. I'll draw a shape in here that goes to both edges and then click on it to see how it looks. It doesn't show up, so I need to adjust its depth. I can double click on it and open it again and move it up higher. It shows up now, but just the top levels. I'll try to increase the height to 999 and make it pop out. This still doesn't bring it out enough, so I'll open it again and adjust my drawing slightly more. This kind of adjusting is always part of the design process. Keep trying different things until you get the desired effect. This adjustment helped, but it's still not quite there. I'll select the torso and lower its height to 80, and now it is showing up better. I can reset the circle height to 100 now, as I don't need any of that extra height. Now I'll need to adjust everything else though. The shoulders, elbows, hands, and head were all set to 80, so I'll need to select them and adjust them down to 70. and the arms all just down to 60. Now rotating the board to see how everything looks, I see one of the legs is coming up too high. I'll need to adjust its height to push it slightly behind the torso. I'll keep moving it down in increments until I find the right spot. Seventy-five looks to be the winner. Now with the connected line tool and the arc tool, I'll draw some more details for the torso. I'll do the same flat puff again for this and 
then mirror horizontally. Looks pretty good, but I think they are too tall. I'll adjust their height down to just be above the torso surface. Looks like 85 works well for this. Now let's give him some feet. I'm using the Smart Spline tool available in the Vector Drawing Suite to do this. It allows me to change from lines and curves on the fly while drawing without having to change tools. Needs a little adjusting here and I have the shape of my foot. Now to puff it. Let's try the curve puff just to see what it looks like. That doesn't seem to work for this, so let's try the flat puff again. That looks good. Now let's copy it, paste it, and move it over to the other leg. This leg is tilted back, so I'll adjust the foot height down to match up with the leg. I'll try 70. Nope, that's still too high. I'll try 60. That looks good. This robot is really coming together. I'm very pleased with it so far. All that is left is detailing the head. Let's start with a rectangle all the way across. Center it, and then let's choose the extrusion tool. This opens up a profile window like the revolve tool did. I want to extrude it horizontally, so I'll select the checkbox to change the direction. Let's draw an arc with the lowest points of it being around a half inch and click OK. This looks good. Now I want a dome on top of his head, so I select the circle tool and draw a circle and position it so just the top sticks out over the head. Then with the bubble puff, I can make it dome shaped. It's too tall, so I'll adjust the height down to about 70 and perfect. Now to give him some eyes. I'll draw a circle again and position it roughly where an eye should be. Then I'll puff it. Since this is sitting on top of the head, I'll change the depth to 0.25 and use the curve puff. This doesn't seem to be defined enough, so I'll adjust the depth to 0.125. That's better. And I'll mirror it horizontally. That seems to make them too high though, so I'll adjust the height down to 40 to flatten them out a bit. Now he needs a mouth. With the rectangle tool again, I'll draw in and center a mouth shape. I'll zoom in for this one because I will be putting some small details in there. I'm going to draw lines across the mouth. But first, let's puff the mouth shape using the flat puff again. I need to increase the height to get it to raise up above the head surface. I'll try 200. Not enough. How about 999? And wow, that's plenty tall, but the shape looks wrong. I'm going to double click on it, and I see I didn't move the slider over to give it straight edges. 
Now with that fixed, it looks right, but it is too tall. I'll adjust it back down and try a few until I find the right height. Seventy five it is. Now back to the line I drew before. I want to use a V cut to engrave in a line here. I can just select a bit and define a depth. I'll use the 60 degree V bit because it makes a nice and thin line. The default depth is way too deep, so I'll adjust the depth to 0.125, nope too shallow. How about 0.15? That seems to look right. Now I want to repeat this line along the length of the mouth. I'm going to use another tool that is available with the vector drawing suite. This one is called Copy Offset. If I can find it. Here it is under the Tools menu at the bottom. This tool allows you to make multiple copies of something in horizontal and vertical rows with set spacing. This will take a couple tries to find the right spacing and number needed to fill the space. Looks like seven copies at the space of 0.1 works well. Now I'll select them all in my carving list and adjust so they are centered. Now the robot is pretty well done. I'll zoom back out and make some adjustments to tweak it a little and get it just right. Now I want to make this into a pattern. The floor rectangle I started with, I'll move to the bottom of the list, and then I'll select everything else. Once everything is selected, click the group button and put them all into a folder within the list. Now I have just the patterns isolated, and with only that folder selected, I can choose the Make Pattern tool and save this as a complete pattern in my library. Give it a name and select Save. Now I can click on my blue shell and find it in the pattern library. Here it is. Click on it and place it on the board. It looks exactly like the model. To carve this, I would want to optimize it by adding a draft to it Medium is too much, the small draft works well. Then I will also set the bit optimization tool to best. Looks good. I can make a bunch of these now. My intention is to make these into chocolate molds. You can see more about how I do that on the Carverite build blog at carverite.com.